They say that the secret to speaking fluent English is to expose yourself to new English words as much as possible. It's no surprise that the average native English speaker knows 20,000 to 35,000 words. That's why in this English lesson, I'll give you 20 new verbs that will take your English from being advanced or intermediate to the fluent level so that you don't get stuck at your current English level. And I'm not just going to teach you the words that you can find in a plain old textbook. I'm going to show you the words that native speakers like myself actually use in their daily conversations, and they're quite advanced, so write them down or download the PDF using the link below. Let's get started with the lesson. If something matters, it means it's significant. If something does not matter, it means you don't care about it and it is not significant. Let's look at an example. To some people in the United States, sports matter so much to them that they even dress up their pets. If something is significant, it means it's important. So if something signifies something, it's showing something important. Let me show you. So something that's very important to know when you visit the United States is that this sign right here, it signifies that there's no parking. So when you see P with a crossed out mark, it means you can't park there or they'll either tow your car to a different location and you'll have to pay a lot of money or you'll get a ticket and you'll still have to pay a lot of money. So this signifies no parking. To count. So of course you know that counting is usually one, two, three, four, five, and so on. But also in English, we use count to mean that it is included. If you are out of bounds in basketball when you score a point, doesn't count. To consider. So if you describe someone with the adjective considerate, it means that they care about other people and other people's things. When you consider something or someone else, it means you think about the thing or person while making a decision and you think about how the decision will affect them. I was considering going to the football game on Sunday, but the tickets are really expensive. Here is a really interesting English verb, to chronicle. So if you chronicle things, you're telling them in order and you're telling about history or a story that actually happened. In history books, there are lots of chronicles about wars that have happened. I once read a really interesting book that chronicled the life of the famous American chess player, Bobby Fischer. It was really good. To recite something means that you are saying it out loud from memory. So often we recite poems or we recite things from books. So I grew up in the United States, so I can recite the Pledge of Allegiance, but I can't recite any Shakespeare. Instead of just asking someone to remember something or tell about something that had happened, you can ask them to recount it. If you recount something, then you talk about what you remember happening. When people ask me to recount something that was scary or frightening in my childhood, I always talk about the time that I had to get the tooth pulled by a dentist. This verb is super useful in English as well. To discover something means to find it or to find it and it's very new to you. When you discover something, it's usually not expected. You weren't searching for it, but if you discover it, it means you're like, wow, I found this. Let me show you a good example. So when I was a child, I never liked spicy food, but when I got a little older, I discovered that I really liked it when I started trying Indian food. Now here's a word that I use all of the time. If we add the prefix re to discover, we rediscover something. So we find it or we experience it after not having done it or not having seen the thing for a very long time. So you can rediscover old movies that you liked, old music, you can rediscover a hobby that you like to do. Let's look at another example. So usually I just listen to audiobooks or I listen to podcasts, but recently I have rediscovered that I love to read physical books. Now, if you ignore something or someone, it means you don't give any of your focus or your attention to the thing or the person, 
and you don't even give any energy to it as well. So I don't know about you, but sometimes I just ignore my chores when I really need to do them. Even if I have clean laundry that needs to be folded, I'll just, I'll set it on the floor sometimes and ignore it. To ignore something is the opposite of to focus on something. If you focus on something, you are giving it all of your attention and all of your energy. To be focused, to use this as the adjective, means you're very concentrated on just one thing or whatever your goals are in life. I think some of the best advice in life that I've been given is to just focus on what you can control. Don't worry about the other things that you can't control. Just focus on what you can. If something distracts you, it means it takes away your focus. You don't want to be distracted when you are very focused. Okay, I need to stop getting distracted by my phone and get back to work. If you manage something, it means you are in charge of it. You make all of the rules and decisions. And this is where we get the word manager from. So let's look at this verb to manage. So personally, in my family, I manage the household finances. And that means I decide what money we spend on vacations, clothing, and how much money we need to spend on groceries each month. To persist means that you do something without giving up, even if there are some challenges or obstacles in the way. And also, if you persist with your opinion, it means you keep telling people what you believe even though they are doubting you. When I was in college, I was taking 18 credit hours one semester and I really wanted to give up, but I just persisted through that semester and then the rest of college was pretty easy for me. If you remove something, it means you get rid of it or you take it off another thing. I always remove the cap off of my coffee when I needed to cool down a little quicker. If you interview someone, it means you ask them a series of questions. So this word is commonly used as a noun, an interview. If you have a job interview, it means they're going to ask you questions to see if you're qualified for the job. But you can also say they are going to interview me, which means ask me a series of questions. One time my fellow English teacher, Adriana, she interviewed me for her podcast. I think it was a great episode. The verb to rank can kind of be used like saying to grade. If you rank a few things, you say how much you like them and the order that you like them, usually from least to greatest. Or you could say, I like this one the most and this one the least. So if I had to rank my three favorite foods, it would be seafood, pasta, and breakfast foods. A pair of things means two things that go together. So when we use this as a verb, to pair, it means we pick two things that go together very nicely. My favorite date night outfit is just a nice pair of jeans. And I like to pair it with a nice sweater or a nice shirt. Direct. If you direct people, you tell them where to go or what to do. And the job that is usually used with this verb is a director. A few months ago, I visited New Jersey for the first time and I asked someone that lived there to direct me to the best pizza place in town. And I can't remember the name of it, but it was so delicious. Disperse. If things or people disperse, it means they scatter or go away from each other. If things are dispersing, they're spreading apart quickly. After the meeting on Friday, everyone just dispersed. There was no time for chit chat. Everybody just wanted to get their work done. 